All right, we got Corey from Midwest Flooring, the distributor in Denver, Colorado for Cambria. Cambria is a quartz manufacturer based in Minnesota. Corey, teach us how quartz is made. Well, I like to compare it to making cookies. If you can uh, imagine you making cookies or watching your mom make cookies, the first step for any quartz manufacturer is to create their recipe. So when you're talking about a recipe with, with quartz, it's 93% quartz. You've got uh, small pieces all the way down to sizes of sand, up to pieces as big as your, as your thumbnail or bigger. Uh, once they do that, you got 93% of quartz, and then the other 7% is the binder that holds it together, and then uh, a pigment that creates the color and the design because quartz naturally is white. So if you can imagine a monster mixer, uh, you know, the small one for your cookies, obviously this one's as big as a building. Uh, they put that formula in there for that design, and once they mix all that up, it comes out of that mixer looking like wet gravel. Uh, it comes out on the conveyor belt into the cookie sheet, just like we're still making cookies here. Once you get that into the cookie sheet, they fill the entire cookie sheet with their, with their cookie dough, or obviously their quartz uh, recipe in this case, and it gets shaken until all of the quartz flattens out. Once it's all flattened out, they put another cookie sheet on top of it, suck all the air out of it so that it's completely non-porous. There's nothing that can get in it. There's no holes or voids. It's, it's, uh, it's you know, the, all the volume in that material is filled. And then just like cookies, once again, you put it in the oven, and when it comes out, you end up with a piece of quartz that uh, looks a lot like this. It's, it's uh, just like normal quartz, but uh, there's no shine to it yet. So the last piece of that is that they take a huge disc that's shaped like a horseshoe that has diamond bits on it, and it rubs on the surface of the slab to make it shiny. Uh, Corey, what makes Cambria different from other quartz manufacturers? What's really neat about Cambria is, first off, it's owned by the Davis family, so it's a family-owned business. Uh, the Davis family has owned Davisco or Davisco for years, and uh, Davisco you probably haven't heard of, but owns all the dairies, owns uh, all of the cheese-making process uh, in Minnesota, and uh, they actually make 90% of all the cheese for Kraft. So more than likely, you've already bought a product from them, you just didn't know it. Um, what was really neat is that all the big manufacturers use this, the same manufacturer to make their quartz. It's called Brenton. And uh, Cambria was able to move away from that Brenton technology and use the cheese mixing process uh, to mix their quartz. What's really neat about that is that they uh, revolutionized the quartz industry from being a speckly boring product to designs like you can see behind me that have all kinds of movement and are really unique. All right, what else makes Cambria unique? Uh, a couple other things, obviously the style and design with that technology that we talked about, but also that every single design that Cambria has is all the same price, and that uh, they're working through their current inventory, but every single slab is going to be offered only in a jumbo size, so you don't have to worry about big islands or anything anymore. They come 132 long by 65 and a half inches deep. Those are huge slabs. It's, it's uh, been a huge right. revolutionary thing for the industry. Down here, massive slabs. Corey, what are questions people often ask you about Cambria? Um, well, I think that a lot of the questions that get asked are, are for uh, quartz in general. A lot of people say, uh, can I put a hot pot right on your quartz? And the answer is no. Just like any stone, granite, or anything like that, uh, it's susceptible to something called thermal shock. When you put something hot on a cold surface, it's kind of like uh, maybe you've taken a wine glass and stuck it under the hot water and it cracked. The same exact thing can happen to stone, so you want to be really cautious with that. Uh, something else you want to be really cautious of or, or a question that comes up is, can I uh, stain my quartz? Well, you can't stain it because it's non-porous, but you can harm the material with a harmful enough chemical. So you want to be really cautious and you want to check out your manufacturer's website for uh, approved cleaners for that product. Uh, one more thing that I just want to cover that's very Cambria specific is that they've gotten really good uh, with all of their designs. You can see behind me, this is Britannica. And with Britannica, you can get a lot of movement with this gray through it, and you can get a little bit less or subtle differences in the movement. And you want to just uh, be aware of that when you're buying this product. It's a lot more like a natural stone. Got it. So each slab is different with Britannica. Are there other Cambria colors that we should look out for? 
Absolutely. Any of them that have any kind of movement in it, even this next one that's uh, right next door, while it, it's pretty sturdy and steady, you still can get a lot of dark colors or light colors mixed together, and you want to know that that's something that can happen within each slab and it's going to be different. Yeah, so that's like the, uh, the beauty of natural stone is also the beauty of Cambria. Each slab is different. You're never quite sure exactly what it's going to look like. That's exactly right. But the general tones of uh, are represented in each slab. Is that, that correct? That would be a perfect way to state it. Okay, thanks.